thing. And honestly, I only expect the roster to grow as I know Kofi is one of the players I have convinced into playing Joker day one. So we'll get there when we get there. Right now, you got a you know, bird, you got a tactician. You know, everyone said playing gang, but we'll see what happens, man. We'll watch Joker come out, he's not good, man. Here we go! Jewel. We're about to fight in the streets after this. Starting right off the bat, throwing out some thunders from the middle of the stage. Now, Robin's entire game plan is going to be to try to dominate stage control with a lot of just projectiles, especially the arc fire. Arc fire is like a really good strategy for just like, it, it's similar to PK fire in terms of like, it stays out for a while, allows your opponent not to be able to deal with it. And the, the abilities, the options that come from it when you have your opponent off the stage is like, you, you could trap them forever. Probably one of the best ledge trappers, honestly. Better at that, Arcfire is amazing for the shield pressure that it elicits. And when you combine that with Jules' unique movement, this man is going to be grooving all around you. Your defensive play has to be so on point just so that you get the chance to survive. And you're it's going to be tough if he doesn't know how to do it with the arc fire on the stage, right? Because it's something you're going to have to adapt to. You have to mix up the timing of how you come back to the stage, mix up if you're going to go for the ledge jump, because what he wants the most, because the only way to truly avoid it is to go for the roll or wait for it to wear off. If you go for the roll, that's what he wants. He gets an arc fire, gets an up smash, stock one. Gone. That's going to be a lot of the style play. The ledge play, I feel, is going to especially be dangerous. Arc Thunder is going to be a great projectile just for Jewel to occupy the space in the air. And that's all he really needs to do. If he's able to control the skies, anti-air Kofi without extending too far, then Pokemon Stadium is as good as his. He doesn't even have to really respect the reflector because you could just call that out by waiting. Charge longer, reposition yourself, swing over the reflector, which you're gonna see Jewel do a ton of with his projectiles. Yeah, that was a cheeky recovery right there. You saw him throw out the thunder so you get him off of him so you get back to the stage safe and sound. Air dodges to avoid the down tilts. And right in the nick of time, too, as he just got his Elwing Tome back. But you're going to get all your Tomes back coming off the Angel Plat as we get our tied stock. But Kofi not eating that much percentage in the meantime. One thing I can never sleep on with Jewel, man, is his movement. He has some of the crispest movement out there. He's like wave bouncing constantly oh, with all class. these projectiles. I just, he does it like it's nothing. It, it just becomes natural. That, that's the way Robin's meant to move, right? I have definitely not. But Kofi, Nowhere in the books is it written to do this. Both of these men have phenomenal movement with their characters. Kofi taking complete advantage of how well he can use his double jump to control the skies. And just as you mentioned, Jewel's usage of wave bouncing and his item play is going to be pristine because he cannot afford to do otherwise. Now he's got him off stage. I was talking about how Jewel had like, uh, oh no, did he just gamble it all? Almost got hit by the down smash, brings it back, gets the down air, not enough to get the, sour, got, I think that was like the sour spot. Sour right spot there. and good DI, it's keeping Jewel in here a lot longer. It's also worth noting that uh, you know, Robin's a little bit on the, uh, the heavier side of the mid weights. I'll, I'll credit to, to wearing thick robes. Thick robes, lots of bucks, two swords. It's gonna weigh a woman down. But now Kofi stealing the lead. This could be a big, big opening for him. He can just get back down on the stage safe and sound. I was talking about how Jewel is really good at ledge trapping. I feel like Kofi's been doing a phenomenal job to just keeping him off. You know, it's worth noting that both of these players actually excel at very similar traits. It's just that their characters are so vastly different. So you're going to see them operating in different ways, but their movement is great, their pressure game is fantastic. They're gonna mix up how they're recovering, so you can't even take advantage of how linear the recovery of Falco or Robin is. It's gonna be a great game of just building on top of, I know that you know that I know, that Kofi and Jewel are gonna play throughout this entire game. Now, I recognize that Kofi went for the jab on that tech read right there. I think he just wanted to play it safe because he didn't know if it was actually gonna happen or not, because an up smash could have potentially been something big. There we go, Jewel bringing it back. The Levin Sword being destructive in the air. It's essentially a smash attack mid-air. Thing is strong, doesn't even care. Gets the confirm, confirms it into the back air. Your boy Kofi, taking away game one. So now they're, they're both my boys. It's a heartbreaker to see one of these guys gotta go. But someone's gotta advance to the fight lane. And honestly, if there was anyone to, to really represent the strength of New York, I would rather it be one of these guys. Jewel doing a fantastic job of repping the city. Kofi becoming one of the leading heads of the island. The new guard to rise up and join the ranks of Depaz of Mr. E. And it's just, so, it's so great to see them duking it out this deep in bracket too. I couldn't be more proud. Yeah, it's a shame that they have to do a team kill. Because, you know, Long Island, New York City, they kind of merge a lot, I guess. And of this particular friend group, like we're always talking and stuff. So it's yeah. like, it, it truly be like that. But hey. Game two is bringing us back to Pokemon Stadium too, and the only thing that I can really root for out of these two is some good clean play, because that's what we really came here to see for a good show. 
And if there's anything that you're coming to see when you see Jules Robin, Kofi's Falco, someone's gonna get wrecked. Yes. And it's gonna be a good show while it happens. Honestly, I mean, that's the name of, that's the name of this tournament. Like, it, people getting wrecked out here. And now you see him dribbling the Levin Sword a bit. Whenever, Jules always on point. Whenever he, like, he loses a projectile, whether it be the book or the, the sword usage, because they only have so many uses before they go away. But the second they go away, he knows it. He can easily catch it and capitalize and play a little bit of item play that Kofi's gonna have to respect. And he's actually been doing a great job of trying to avoid it. Using, feeling a lot more comfortable with the reflector, trying to throw the projectiles right back towards Jewel, trying to get point blank and finds himself with a, between uh, arc fire and eleven sword. See, that's why I didn't like the reflector play, at least for myself, because it's back leaving, close. it's leaving Kofi so open to trying to fight the projectiles that he doesn't even get a chance to fight Jewel. And you can see that reflected in the percentages. That now Kofi's starting to rack it up. He's starting to get his pillars going, but only breaking hundred percent on his first stock. Meanwhile, Jewel strike the build up that extra pressure. Oh, oh that was sick. Okay, I mean the thing is he got the jab lock. Then after that, it becomes like a tech move where you're gonna go. So you Bro, almost I didn't even know he had the that. follow up. That was disgust. How did he know? I didn't even know Robin's jab can do that. Oh yeah, any, I don't any, even know if Jewel knew that he could do that. He probably would have followed that he, up with down he, smash. He definitely was yeah, just like, smash. what's happening? Speaking of down smash, yeah. Puts him off stage, it immediately traps him into the roll. This is exactly what he wants. He's in that prime position to force him to land right in front of him. Oh, Bears, he's out of jumps. And so Elwin got buffed in the previous game. Goes oh, way it's so farther. Good. It's such a good recovery now. It's directional. It's a much larger boost on the second jump. And even though it has less uses, generally speaking, that's actually better because it's going to recharge itself a little bit quicker. Okay, okay. And you're going to see Jill have the tome to use if he gets there. He just, I mean, the thing is, he saw Jill pushing a button, just went right off stage and spiked him. I mean, that's what you got to do. And Elwin pushed him off? Yeah, man, that's still a projectile. It, is, it technically is wind, so it has a wind box. Yeah, the wind beneath his so wings. got to give him a whoosh. I know, that's, that's nuts. I honestly, I mean, it's technically wind. It's L yeah, wind. It's not, it's it's not a technical. It's, it's just magical wind. What more do you want wow, out of him, okay. man? We'll take it. He's got to get back I to the it. stage somehow, and it's still a projectile. I'll still edge guard with it. Right, it's so still an even fight at the end of all of that. Yep. It's been a very quirky game, too, out of both of these players, but nonetheless, they're still keeping things at a dead even. It's still a ton of ledge play, it's still a ton of pressure. Just both players staying on top of each other, being very smart with their movement. Sure, the method has changed, but it's all the same. And he's lost his arc fire now, so trying to dribble with the book. You saw Kofi chilling below the platform, so he couldn't capitalize with the dribble. Potential spike. Didn't even want to try to go for the two frame. Just wants to set up for the trap afterwards instead. And he's hungry for that down tilt this time around. Trying to mix him up. Down tilt would set up into a back air, I believe. At the percentages that we're climbing at, I think even up air could start to threaten kill. Okay, just going to uh, Falco Phantasm away for potential danger. Hot between the arc fires, it's not a bad position. Calls out the jump again. Comes up with 11 sword forward air. Jewel putting a point on the board in this race to three. Special appearance by Krom. <laughs> there he is. That's, nice that's James right there. He's waiting for him. <laughs> Let's go, James. I'll show you James waiting for him, man. Ah, oh, man, James winning winner's side. Mm -hmm. It's still a loser's side match. One stays, one goes. You don't even know for how long that's going to last. Just as a note for those trying to follow the bracket at home, following us live with the stream here on House of 3000, Dark Wizzy 3 1 over Jackal. So you've got your Mario versus Krom waiting for you in Winner's Side. They even settings. got rid of the Wolf! They even got rid of the Wolf! Top 8! Your top winner's 8! Side, your Mario. expectations mean nothing in this it's meta. It's Mario, Bowser, Krom, and a Pokemon Trainer? trainer? Well, where's my Palutena? Where's my Wolf? Hey, she's. I'm um, excited! This will be hype. Hold on. Palu's still alive with Nairo. If Jackal beats Nairo, then your hopes and dreams die right there. And the Buzz. Although right. the Buzz doesn't really use Palutena as much anymore. But hey, she's still alive. Still alive. We still believe out here. Just like these two competitors, man. Game three, one to one. Let's get it. I'll take a quick moment to appreciate House Preview. This is actually one of the best songs they added. It's like The Roost, but better. This situation. Is he dead? Check his life pulse. Check his life pulse, dog. I don't know. That was definitely just like, what are you going to do? There are better places to take a nap than here. That was quick draw McGraw. Just waiting for him to pull the trigger. There we go. And again, you got Kofi getting pressured so much by Co Kofi. That's what he has to do. He has to get right in there and apply this corner pressure. Don't allow Robin to set up his traps that he wants to set up. 
Smashville is such a good stage for Falco as well, just because a lot of the play becomes, let me control the ledge, all right, let me safely combo you because I can control the center platform so well. He's able to move so freely because of his jumps. Oh, he went for a huge call out with that up smash. Kofi, Kofi does this from time to time where he'll have brilliant play, and he'll go for this haymaker option. That makes no sense. And like one in three times it'll work. And that back air actually forced out the air dodge, but because of the timing of it, he was able to swing out a second one, so he was effectively dead the second he committed to the air dodge. There we go, runs in, jumps above the arc, fire. That down throw is so sick, dude. He just throws him on the ground. Oh, no! Okay, no, man, yeah, get back. Man, I, get I told back. you, man, that, that extra burst of wind that you get out of El, El, uh, Elwin now. It's, it's impressive. It's that it, good stuff. He gets him back to the stage, clean as can be. But now Kofi is like, you, you got back? Here you go, takes a percent. Already has him at 102. Looking for potential edge guard. Goes for that. How many times is Kofi going to land a down here on the edge of the stage? Like, how many times are you going to land that die? Yes, it's going to spike into the ground. It's very flashy looking because it sets up for amazing combos afterwards. Here we go. It's 133. Kofi has yet to be touched. Look at that two frame again. Yeah, there you go. Calls him out with a, just a forward smash. Like, here you go, man. Like, these tools are just so good to use at the ledge for Robin just because they occupy so much space. From down smash covering so much ground to forward smash lingering so heavily. And, you know, one thing we haven't highlighted yet in this matchup is the static properties of a lot of the Levin hits and all of the Thunder Tones. They add just that little bit more hit stun. And that's so important for Jewel to be able to move around the map and move around his opponents effectively. But he's fighting at a pretty fair deficit right now as Kofi's chilling with a second stock and he's on route to make it back to the stage with a rapid jab at that. He's gonna roll right through the fire, brings it back. And I, I love how that last kill, he actually just shot him from a distance. Like it was the laser that finished him off. There we go. Wait for that spot dodge. I didn't want to commit to any backers or anything. Yeah, and all that pressure. Stop dropping shield, it, man. It, the thing is, he was done for. Because he was right in front of his face, that arc fire, that arc fire hit his shield immediately. And he, he was pretty much done because if Jewel would have landed that forward smash on his shield, it, it might, might have broke. That's well, what Jewel was afraid of. He was trying, or Kofi was afraid of. He's going to try to go for the parry out. Well, the problem is, is that if Kofi tries to stay in shield, he's going to get grabbed. He's just going to get a, an actual yeah. follow up. He can't but, get hit by arc fire that close. That's, but that's the issue. Kofi has been doing that this entire set thus far. So Jewel knows, all right, shield dropping is down smash time. And even killing off the top with down smash, it's weird, but hey, it works, man. But might be too little too late for this game as it looks like Kofi's trying to clean up this stock, building up this percentage bit by bit with the lasers. And he even knew he was going to get the roll from ledge, but poor positioning is going to cost him. Kofi's looking for these back airs in the middle of neutral. Has the arc fire, goes in for the nose for Rob to recover some of that health, but he tried to go for a second one and lost the book. I don't know if he was trying to get rid of it immediately or if he honestly thought that he had one more charge. But here we go, down tilt, hold on that ledge a little bit too long, apply some more damage with the lasers. He might die to an up tilt at this point. Back air to apply pressure on the shield. Oh no, Falco Phantasm's right in front of him. Kofi's in a bad situation off stage. Can he get back? Gets caught by the arc fire. You can't hold him to the ledge too long. It's such a terrible situation. Okay, Perry's gets away from the arc fire. Gets caught by the neutral. Was that? Levin oh my Nair. god! Levin Nair managing to catch him, and just like that. There was no game. zoom in. He just died. Nah, man. He jumped, and I think the jump actually may have pushed him just a little bit further at the very end. Yeah, we'll get the quick the replay from the house tech. See what's going on. The Levin sword, it's so strong. Watch this Nair, catch that. He's flying, he's flying, he's flying back Got in jumps. it. Jumps out of it. You I get him. it, and the reason competitors go for those jumps, right, is because they're trying to get into that little that little bubble in the corner. Like, if you look at that square on the radar and the blast, and they're trying to reach that corner, and the way to do it for him, his plot process is, I am Falco, I have a high jump. I'm gonna go for the double jump to try to avoid it. But that might have actually what sealed his uh, stock, you know? Now here we go, going into a potential. Absolute gentleman playing this music. This could be a potential final game if Jewel manages to take one more away. The thing is, a lot of these have been in Kofi's favors, in my opinion, but Jewel just keeps clutching it out. Jewel it's, was losing that entire time. It's just the ledge play. Yeah. It's the ledge play, and we constantly bring this up, man. Like, you can't be slipping on the ledge. The crowd is erupting. They want their boy Jewel to bring it back. One game away. Okay, again. 
Knocks him off stage. You saw Kofi try to avoid that arc fire by going for the double jump, but it still it lasts for so long that you just kind of have to respect it. That's why Jewel throws it out there to prevent the ledge play from happening from Falco. It's just active for so long, and the stun that it's leaving you in is just perfect for Jewel to get a plethora of follow-ups. But Kofi's been doing a great job of operating out of disadvantage. He manages to turn reversals so convincingly. Catches the roll. Another up tilt action coming in. I mean, it put him into a combo heavy situation, manages to catch the up tilt. There you go. Another roll caught. An air dodge. I mean, that, honestly, Kofi's playing extremely aggressive whenever he finds Jewel into the air. So every single time, goes for the immediate aerial. It might be a conditioning at this point because he's going for the air dodge every single time. You know, so he's not able to get that kill. So eventually he's gonna like wait for the air dodge and get the kill later on. Not a lot of uses out of that. Elwin Tom Juice Jewel has to be careful if he's gonna get himself back to the stage just like that. He's got a couple of seconds. He's gotta hold this center stage. Such a high percentage, and his tome is back. And the thing is, Jewel can get a kill. We saw this in the last game, this this percentage uh, differential. But the thing is, he just gets one back here, one living sword swing. But Kofi can easily close this out, 172%. Down tilt, back air, gets the yeah. laser kill. He, he, we actually didn't see him go off because it was the laser that killed him. Like, yeah, man. Went, back air does chest. it. Okay, Set that oh, thing to stuck. kill. Yep, right there. The second down that arc fire hit his shield, he was back done down. for. The second that arc fire hit his shield, he was done for. It's such a good trap for Jewel to go for. And it's only be, the only reason he even set that up is because of his immaculate movement. Just constantly wave bouncing like crazy. Ooh, that was cute. Yeah, the Levitt sort of applying pressure to get Jewel away from like a potential it actually, grab. It clanked with the up tilt. Yeah, smart. Okay, a little miss input right there. Thought he was gonna be able to go for the turnaround grab. Kofi now trying to play out of shield a lot more. I disagree with the moves, man. I think micro spacing is the way to go because when you try to play in shield, you're waiting for an arc fire to catch you. You're waiting for Jewel to swing on you with Nair, catch you jumping because that's something that we've seen a lot from Kofi here is a lot of aerial out of shield play. And Jewel is thriving off that in these later games. Go again, thought he was gonna have a second arc fire to work with or maybe he just wanted to expend his book I was in the middle of arc fire range. But here we go, even percentage. He'll be trying to close that gap by running in, going for the shield, dash shield, because you have to against the uh, likes of Blank Thunder. First up tilt picking up. We're constantly coming back up and down. He Kofi's keeps, not out of it just yet. He keeps dragging him with that. Just drags him back down into the ground. Very smart stuff. Up tilts into a back air looking true combo ish. Kofi, what's that away from England to a game five? Can he pull it out? See, the value of a lot of Kofi's combos isn't just the damage that he gets or whether or not they're true. It's a matter of the fact that he's getting that damage up and he's mispositioning his opponent. And with someone whose movement and entire game plan is so important to being where he wants to be on the stage, Jewel getting mispositioned and getting dragged around left and right from Kofi is pivotal to Kofi's success. There he goes, just tosses the whatever, man. You got a gun, I don't care. Have the sword, it's a projectile too. Up there again, Kofi loves putting Jewel into the air. Challenging him for trying to attempt an edge guard opportunity. Goes for the up air off stage, gets the kill. And I, I respect that situation. Kofi went for an empty hop into a forward smash to bait out a potential like spot dodge, a little earlier spot dodge. Didn't get it timed right now, he's getting back thrown off stage. More Falco Phantasm, more forward airs. If, if you're not stuck in one corner, it's gonna be the other one. And again, the high jump, the high jump uh, aerial movement that Falco gets from being able to go into the air, like it prevents him from being able to get stuck by these projectiles. He's able to avoid the arc fires, avoid the thunders. Excellent wait from Kofi. Going to reset the situation. No kill off the top of the up air, but even managing to catch Jewel out with his own arc fire. Forward are still not going to kill. Excellent di from Jewel, keeping him around, but he has no. Arc fire to him right now. He's got to try and wait it out, get that back. It's one less pressure tool. Again, Thunder Tome out. That's a really high. And now he's even lost his Elwin. He has to wait so long just to get everything back. Arc fire back online. Levin Sword ready and waiting. Thunder back here. Just like that. Jewel ready and waiting, but he's at 170%. How much longer can Kofi keep this stock going before Jewel manages to pick up the pace and end the game here? It's extremely difficult for him. Sitting at 90%, might die to maximum rage. Jewel looking for this edge guard opportunity. 
Gets the arc fire, cannot get it to confirm afterwards. Forward air, gets the kill. Jewel taking it, three to one, bringing it back after, you know, he took the very first game. And it looked like that no, was- My man's even left, lost his glasses after that. On a, how many times was Kofi in the lead? How many times, how many games was Kofi in the lead and Jewel just takes the rug right underneath from underneath him, you know? Good tactician, plans like, ahead, man. God, He carpet. knows the game plan no matter how deep into the disadvantage he is, how much that stage belongs to him. He tips even, the scales, honestly. Honestly, it tips it in his favor. It worked out every time, even as it looked its bleakest. With him running out of all of his resources, he was never down and out. That was like the doofiest like hog post set I've ever seen out of either of them. And I'm glad it happened to the both of them. A, a heartbreaker for Long Island, because Long Island is actually dying out at an alarming rate.